Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to cover the Dark Horse, the 24 Dark Horse Mustang. This is one of the trims that was launched during the global debut of the 24 Mustang in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I was there in Hart Plaza. The video you're going to see is what uh, I took of the event, and you'll see the cameras moving around and heads in the way, but that was part of being there and being live. And there's something at the end of this video I'm going to tell you what I didn't necessarily agree with with the launch and something that I would have done a little bit different. But other than that, home run, love the different trims, EcoBoost GT and the Dark Horse. Check out the video. All right, here you are, the seventh generation of the Ford Mustang. Thank goodness Ford decided to keep it and keep it ice so we definitely love that gas engine in there you can see the sleek design the chiseled look the wider shoulders on the rear quarters this car has an aggressive stance now here you're looking at uh, i think this is an eco boost um and look <laughs> tire smoke and a mustang that kind of goes hand in hand doesn't it but you'll see this design here we're going to look at some pictures and i think you're really going to like uh, the difference in the cars. Now, the EcoBoost for the first time will have a different nose on it than the GT or any other trim. And here you have it, the big dog itself, the Dark Horse. You can see that blue ember metallic. This car has an aggressive stance. That color, by the way, is awesome. It actually changes a little bit in the light. The stance of this car, the rear quarters, or what we call rear shoulders, uh, being bulky like that, it really adds some aggressive just an aggressive look to the car the belt line on the car is a little bit lower that gives it that that ride it looks like the ride height is a lot lower i do think it's a little bit shorter um but it gives it that look the tri bar headlights are right on time i do love how they look they're very clean also the hood rolls down you sort of have that low brow all the way across the front that gives the car a very aggressive look when you're looking at it or if you're looking in a mirror uh and it's behind you but the tri-bar headlights are right on time. Here you'll see a heat extractor uh, vent. Also, that is used for um, letting air out, believe it or not. It helps with the downforce. So you have the splitter in the front, and then you have this, and dual function, get rid of some heat. Um, here, I took this video of the Dark Horse driving out. Now, if you're watching the live stream, this is the part where it drives out on the live stream, but we were there at Hart Plaza in Detroit, at this invite only event, it was awesome. Seeing that car pull out, hearing it, hearing the crowd, hearing the cheers, there was a lot of excitement there and a lot of people happy about this. Uh, there's a little camera going across filming it for the live stream, but that logo, what do you think about the logo? I'd love to know in the comments. Um, I think it's, it's well, it's Dark Horse, right? It's a, it's a different logo, it's aggressive. It's supposed to be different than everything you've ever had. You know, dark horse pretty much means it's like horse betting. People didn't know it was coming. They didn't know it was capable of. They didn't know anything about it. And then the horse shows up and wins. And look at this look right here. This thing, you know, if you look at like the 06, 07 Mustangs, it sort of has that feel in the grill, but only right in the grill. And then everything else is completely different. Um, the exhaust tips on the back, the dual intakes in the front, dual throttle bodies. Uh, the logo or the graphics on the hood, the color of this particular one, like I said, the blue ember metallic, just seeing that stance of that car and how the sides look and the spoiler on the rear makes this car really, really strong. I think they call that a, a ducktail um, duck uh, uh, spoiler. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just the crease across the back uh, and we'll see that in just a second about the tail lights. The crease across the back, I think, is very modern. But if you look at this car, it has a very strong stance to it. I like how they uh, raise the roof slightly over the driver so you can get in and out with a helmet. You don't have to take your helmet off to get in and out when you're at the track. Imagine that. Uh, and, and they truly thought about that. You can see the Grabber Blue calipers, uh, the brake calipers front and rear. Uh, it's really cool. The selection of wheels are great, by the way. Uh, but the, the fact that you can pick from different colored calipers, for Pete's sakes, that's really getting into customizing it. There again, the front of this car, it is race car. I mean, it really does say race car. And with projected 500 plus horsepower, I think 510, 515, uh, but they're saying around 500 horsepower for this generation for Coyote is pretty stout. Um, 
being at Hart Plaza, being there with all the, the people there that were there to see the car and the you know, Ford team uh, and others, it was it was really exciting to be able to experience this. And and I have to tell you that energy around this, the seventh generation Mustang in general, but really the dark horse. I mean, it was just, it was strong. You see the GT in the center, the GT, uh, the red uh, GT convertible over there. Uh, there was no shortage of people taking video and pictures. It was actually hard. Uh, but uh, that blue ember metallic, look how much metal flake is in that paint right there. That is incredible. You see the texture in the badging for the Dark Horse. Sort of has that angled texture, the lines into it. And there's that crease. See that crease across the back? It gives it a feel of a little bit of a spoiler there. And then you have the spoiler on the deck lid. Um, Think about a 67 or a 68 Mustang, how the taillights curved in before. Uh, this is sort of the modern day version of that curving in. The hood on this car, you can see the lines, see the front uh, fenders, how chiseled they look. Uh, the windshield's laid back. This car just looks like it's going 150 as it's sitting still in a crowd. Uh, this is the red GT convertible. I'm sorry, I don't know the exact color of that red there's the new gt logo with performance written in it kind of thinks back to the 60s where he had performance and there's those tail lights not only is it a really cool shade of red it's like an orangish red uh, but it's a modern day version like i said of the 67 and 68 tail light where you have that crease in there back of the car is very clean uh, once again i'm showing the tri bar headlights just in case you want to see, you know, you do have the, the, you have the greeting lights where the lights will flash. That's a little below the hood and above the headlight itself. You'll see that light uh, that actually lights up and flickers there. Now, the cluster, the center stack in the cluster is totally cool. This is where you can set your performance parameters. This is where you set, well, HVAC now, no longer uh, controls. There is that, that, uh, Fox body uh, instrument cluster. You see the uh, it's 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 a version of the Fox body uh, instrument cluster. So basically, you can program this so that comes up. If you think back to the eight, the days of the '87 through '93 Mustang, well, there you go. Uh, you can make the instrument cluster look like that. You can also change it in sort of a standard or a race mode. Uh, it helps you read it a little bit better. Uh, seeing that center stack. Um, to be able to go in there and control the HVAC, the, the suspension, the exhaust, uh, to be able to set uh, for the drifting brake, you know, to set that up, um, to change, and of course the gauges, you can change how the gauges look, which gauges do you want to see um, illuminated in front of you. You can also change the color of the car that is on that center stack. Uh, there you see the line lock, so you can set line lock from it. There are your gauges that I'm talking about. And you really get to customize what's more important for you. How big do you want the tack? You know, if you're at the track, the tack is more important, say, than the speed, uh, the, the speedometer. And I say more important, they're both important, but you want to see the RPMs of the engine quicker. Here you are, you're able to change the color of the car so that the color of the car on the screen matches actually what you're driving. Um, it's just, isn't that cool though? Oh, by the way, one piece of glass. Over the instrument cluster and the center stack, it's one piece of glass. It's huge, and it's angled toward the driver, so you feel like you're in a cockpit. Uh, there is a dark section that doesn't illuminate between the center stack and the uh, cluster, but there's no gap there, no seam. It's all one piece of glass, so you don't have a somewhere for dirt to collect. But you can feel how this looks like a cockpit. You have that uh, steering wheel with the flat bottom. You have the sort of Fox body rectangular HVAC vents right in the center. Kind of takes you back to that 8793. And there's the grill on the GT. A little bit different than the Dark Horse and also different than the Eco. Alright, so that was cool. You get to see this, I mean, awesome looking machine. It is so cool to see. I mean, the presentation, it, I was live in the crowd. I was there at Hart Plaza and you could just hear the cheers, the rumble, the claps, the yelling. I mean, it was really cool. And when you're watching the live stream that Ford did, uh, the production company did a great job, but there was a lot of that background noise you didn't hear. It was a pretty loud crowd there. So it was cool. I know it grabbed me, the attention, the music, the, the whole nine yards. The bottom line is 
it's a very cool deal, but here's what I didn't necessarily agree with. I felt like there should have been a bullet or a Mach 1 there. The GT500, I don't know what they're doing with that. If it were me, I would come out with it on the 60th anniversary, so in 25, I would save that and just, you know, just hit the road with the uh, the barrels blazing, so to speak. Um, the Dark Horse is, it's a really cool thing. I like the vibe about it. I like the, you know, you'll see this culture built into this Mustang thing. And I say culture, it's going to be, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's some pretty good marketing. I think you're going to see some really cool stuff. A lot of cool apparel with that, um, that Dark Horse badge on there. I just think it was time for a change. I do 100% prove on that. Um, not that they asked me or anything. However, I do think that Mach 1 bullet or something would have been nice in there, but I agree that something like the GT500 would be in 25. I also know this, they introduced the Dark Horse. You don't wanna take away from it. And so that is the 24, the main horse out of the stable in 24. What comes in 25? Is it a revised dark horse or a dark horse uh, option, uh, you know, with added options? Or is it the GT500 or is it the Mach 1? And do you see those trims come out each year for the next few years? So anyway, that's my take on it. Uh, Ford did a great job on this. The presentation was great. I appreciate uh, the ability to be there, to be ringside, to see this live and Detroit Auto Show uh, was pretty cool as well. So I'm out. If you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe to our channel. Plenty of Bronco, Mustang, and other vehicle content, but right now it's heavy Bronco and Mustang. See ya.